And at 15.0 centimeters, this inkling pen automatically remembers whatever you draw with it on any kind of paper. Using ultrasonic and infrared technologies, the pen captures your sketch line by line, storing it on a receiver you place on your piece of paper. When you connect the receiver to the computer via a USB cable, it transfers these images as files, and voila, you have your digital image. And it preserves that authentic proportions between the pen and the paper, which a scanner sometimes will distort. That's so true. So it's brilliant. Think about all the notes and things you take, which you don't even have to bother trying to scan it in. You just use the pen and put the little drive into your computer, and there you have it. I don't know if you all watched in February a uh, Jeopardy program where the 74-time Jeopardy champion Ken Jennings was beaten by IBM's Watson. I know. We were all disappointed that day. <laughs> <laughs> IBM's Watson can now do 80 trillion operations per second, and it's a little bigger than a refrigerator freezer. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's amazing what IBM is. No wonder Warren Buffett is buying the company. <laughs> uh, I remember the last time Watson beat up the chess player, if you remember it, a few years ago. Uh, it's amazing what uh, American companies and some other companies out there doing in the invention world. This, of course, is the one invention that is getting so much buzz. It's called the surveillance hummingbird. And what it is, it's an actual surveillance, uh, kind of like those drones that you hear about, yeah. except this is an actual one that is smaller than a hummingbird, and it's lighter than a battery, but it has all the advanced features you can think of. It can hover and rotate clockwise and counterclockwise. It can go forward, backwards, and it weighs less than 18.7 grams or one AA battery. It's also equip equipped with a video camera, and because it's so small, the NAV, that's the name of this thing, the Nano Air Vehicle, yeah. can go anywhere that humans can't. It can spy out of... Uh, safe spots in combat zones and hunt for survivors during an earthquake and even locate a chemical spill, go into these uh, radiation zones when you have a nuclear That's disaster. Right. Basically, these have all sorts of different uses. And, of course, you can imagine the military is very interested in this technology. Very expensive, though. Very, very expensive, but it just goes to show you how we're using this new nanotechnology to create smaller and smaller devices, which are going to have so many different uses. These are exciting things. I mean, look at this one. This is by Athletic Propulsion Labs, Concourse Basketball Shoe. You wear this shoe, you get a three and a half inch more of a bounce. Of course, <laughs> NBA banned it. <laughs> but you can get it, you know? I mean, you can go online to this Athletic Propulsion Labs. <laughs> yeah. Concourse Shoe, three and a half inch is good looking too. Guess what is one of the most popular jobs in India if you're in the new middle class? What? Being a car salesman. I'm serious. <laughs> Being a car salesman is now a uh, prestige job in India because there are so many people looking to buy cars. You know, for one, uh, Indian farmers are actually making money now because um, produce has become so expensive. They're actually yeah. starting to make a little bit of money. Land is worth much, and people have disposable income, so they're buying cars. Well, car and, salesman is a very good profession, even in this country. Well, you know, it's we, a used car salesman. That's another. Well, issue. I'm sure that's coming next. <laughs> but the fact is. Car salesmen are doing great. Why? Because Indians bought over 2.5 million cars last year, which is 25% increase over the year before. And the country has paved more than 500,000 miles of roads in just the past two decades, which is actually a lot for India. Yeah. Um, production of cars has skyrocketed. Maruti sells more cars than anyone else. Maruti is a very well-known Indian brand. But automakers from Mahindra to Ford to Hyundai also have factories in India. Customers can now buy anything from a $2,000 Tata Nano to the $712,000 Ferrari in India. You can buy this. You and know, two and a half million cars are sold in India. You know how many are sold in America? Oh, I know. I know. Thirteen and a half million. On the other hand, you know, you know the automakers in uh, the United States are salivating at the idea of being able to sell into the Indian market. Yeah. And, of course, it's going to come. But this is the best part of the story. What do you think is the biggest seller of cars? You know, here in the United States, it could be fuel economy these days. Yeah. It could be uh, utility, when you think of sports utility vehicles. In India, what do you think is the biggest motivation or motivating factor these car salesmen what? use? Status. 
<laughs> status. Your neighbor has one, therefore you should have one too. <laughs> so the idea of being uh, economical or um, being green, those concepts have not yet come to India. It's all about big, bold power and announcing yourself in the form of status with these cars. Looking so, at the Jonas' neighborhood. That's <laughs> right, that's right. In and this case, it'll be Sharma's neighborhood. <laughs> and these, these car, you know, of course, these dealerships are, are decked out to the max with leather couches and so forth to give that customer that, you know, uh, experience of a lifetime before they buy the car. It's there are a lot of changes in India. <laughs> <laughs> there are. You want to talk about changes in India. This is a story that just made me laugh. <laughs> Folks, if you're in the need of a guru, but you can't afford that trip to India, what are you to do? Well, now there is something for you called e-guru for dummies. <laughs> Basically... There are holy men in India who are now conducting satsangs on Skype and uploading their sermons on Twitter, lecturing on YouTube, and dispensing wisdom on spiritual networking sites. And they've got quite a following. One of the most popular is called Speaking Tree, which is a spiritual networking website launched by the Times Group last year where members are divided into enlightened souls, and their followers, wandering souls and awakened souls. So you can classify yourself one of three ways. <laughs> and you can receive your private prayer message customized just for you on these sites if you're ever in that desperate need and you just need that little bit of boost. I like the Skype method. <laughs> I think that's great. I mean, you can have 20 people in the room and you can put your iPad and here is the pundit going to do kata. And you know, when the pundit says, look, on YouTube, I can get 10 to 20,000 people all across the world who, who can experience my message. <laughs> and, you know, this is just the kind of gentle, high-speed communication that um, God intended. In fact, he calls it God thought. But remember... If he is successful, do you know how much unemployment will be in the religious <laughs> world? You know, I think you're just going to see a lot more of these e-gurus show up on the Internet. That's what I think. Ultimately, I really think everybody is going to do things for themselves. For instance, I was when I was in India, I was reading that South Korea has decided there's quite a bit of unemployment. So how about unemployed people go out there and see which companies are not following the rules and regulations of the country? You bring the evidence, you bring the photographic evidence along with the documents, and actually the South Korean government will pay you. Do you think that's not going to come to America? It's just a matter of time. I don't know. I think sometimes the Internet is a boon and a blessing, and then other times I think all the terrible things we can do with it. That's true. <laughs> That's a, yeah, you're right. What a havoc it has dealt to the communities around the world. Well, this story just blew my socks off. Wife swapping, threesomes, and group sex has become the new in thing for India's middle class. Folks, this is just story speaks for itself. Only 27% of Indian couples are truly satisfied with their married lives. And the new trend now is for couples... Uh, instead of finding ways to reignite their passion within their marriages in India, most couples are seeking options outside. Uh, so much so that this is a popular practice. 28% of men are open to one-night stands. 23% of women admit having extramarital affairs. And 10% uh, of them admit to having threesomes. I mean, this is a trend that's happening in India. Folks, I read this story and I couldn't believe They're my eyes. They're part of this world. It happens in every country. It's, it happens in India, too. It did many, many years ago also. I guess so, but I guess because of the age we're in, uh, you know, people are feeling like in their new middle age lifestyle, this is an accepted phenomenon. And in those circles, uh, wife swapping is apparently becoming quite a popular thing. But this is actually the rich crowd. You know, it's not your, uh, most of the India, it is not true. This is only in the upper class. Well, according to the article, of course, experts blame this on boredom relentless distractions, and the pursuit of things to spend your money on with fatter and fatter paychecks and promotions. So I guess if you have the money, you'll just find <laughs> ways to spend it. Well, folks, that's <laughs> about all we have for you. We sincerely wish you have a wonderful weekend. Namaste. Namaste.